Hello friends, this is me, Neil Polsani. <clears throat> I'm your mainframe trainer, guys, and we are continuing our video four on this interview question document. So we are on line number 16, guys. On 16 here, what it says different SQL code. Different SQL code. I will tell me what SQL code you have seen in your project. Now, yeah, this is a general question, guys. This is our choice question here. In the interview, guys, they may ask you two kinds of this SQL related part. One, they can give a number saying that Anil, have you seen SQL code minus 305? Can you tell me how do you solve it? That is one way of questioning. The other way of questioning is, have you solved any SQL code errors in your experience? That means it's our choice, right? So now here, guys, lot of people, they will choose an answer which is very common, okay? Now, what you need to choose, guys, what you need to choose here is an SQL code, which is an example, which is an experience. So this particular question, if somebody asked me, then I have four options to choose, guys. One option I'll choose with minus 180, SQL code minus 180, a time or a timestamp or a date is invalid during the program insert query. I may choose an option minus 803, which is a duplicate insert query, but this is not the best one to choose. I can skip this fellow. The other two things which I'm interested in is minus 811, and another one is minus 305. So 811, 305, and minus 180. These are the perfect options that you can choose if they ask you to choose anything on your site. Why I'm choosing these three here is these three are related to data issues. So whenever there is a data issue, we do a proper analysis. Whenever there is a data issue, we'll take certain decision on understanding the data fixing part, and then we read on the process. So if at all there is a data issue story, we can give a proper example, guys. So you choose, guys, you choose which example you want in this particular topic. In your comment session, guys, you simply put a number. Do you want me to give an example of minus 180? or minus 305 or minus 811. Any of these three things, you choose any one from your end. In the next video, we'll add that part, okay? <clears throat> Second question, what are the ways to close the cursor other than close cursor? Does rollback has any impact? So rollback has no impact in anything, guys. I have tried it in the real code as well. Whenever you are doing rollback intentionally also, for some reason, it won't reflect at all. So forget about rollback. The first part of the question says that Anil, what are the ways to close the cursor? Now, obviously you generally write exit SQL close cursor in your program, right? That's what the first point. What is the other way? So let me tell you guys what the intention of this question is, the commit concept. In video three guys, in video three, we told about this one, right? What happens to the cursor? And if you see the, the question number 13 guys, what happens to cursor at time of commit and rollback, right? That is a subsequent question in a different format. In here, guys, you'll be telling that in case in your COBOL DB2 program, if you use the commit and the cursor is not defined as withhold option, automatically the cursor will be getting closed. Okay, the answer is with exit SQL code cursor is one way. Commit in the program also will close the cursor second way. And I'll tell you guys, even if you don't use the exit SQL close also, even if you don't write commit in the program as well, if your program is successful, by default system will close anyway. Even if you leave the program completely outside, the system automatically will close the cursor, guys. So there are three ways actually. Now let's go to the 18th part, what it says, explain updatable cursor. Now, not of people knows that cursor is used for selecting purpose when you want to fetch more than one row. When you want to select more than one row, define a cursor, open the cursor, fetch one by one, one by one until end of the result. That is what you know on the cursor part, right? But actual cursor has two flavors. When you're defining the cursor only, we can mention an option called for fetch only, where it represents that you are only using this cursor data for reading purpose. Now, by default, also system will take for fetch only. So you generally don't mention, don't see in the real code. But you can also use this cursor for updating the data as well in such a case. Okay, when you are reading and updating, like read it concept, guys, read and update, right? In such case, you'll be using cursor 
and after declaration in the declaration only you will write the option call for update of which column column one or column two like that so two options for fetch only which is intention is only for reading purpose for update of column one or column two is what the question is next the question number 19 what is static and dynamic call difference and what is which one is faster so yeah it is a cobal question guys okay it's a cobal question here this is one of the top three questions in cobal module okay cobal has always the common question what is static call what is dynamic call as such right so under static and dynamic call guys there are actually four differences are there we generally talk about two or three differences but there are total four let me give you this four differences in your knowledge in this training recording one is about the syntax you know that guys only if you are already having knowledge on static and dynamic call difference in some theoretical way yes the syntax is the first difference system should understand whether you are using the literal as a constant of your sub program name or you are using a variable for calling a sub program so first is the syntax second is compilation very important interviewer is expecting what is your knowledge on compilation of static call programs and dynamic call program as long as it is static guys it will be required to combine with the sub program load and create a single load module if it is a dynamic call the programs can be keep it separate the load modules will be separated now the third difference the third difference is in case if you are changing the code in the sub program if it is a static call you need to recompile the main program reason anil you already combined the static call right you combined the main program sub program created as a single load so if there is any change in the sub program you will compile it create a new load version main program need to get that new updated load version again to link up so for that along with the sub program in static call along with the sub program you need to recompile main program always in dynamic call since the program loads are always separated you don't need to recompile in case of change in the sub program now these three are very common difference guys anyone can tell in the interview and it's very much easy also the fourth difference that you can tell in the interview but not in project point of view is the compiler option dynam no dynam the compiler pam parameter compiler option dynam no dynam if you use the parameter pam as dynam while compiling your cobal main program if you have used the option dynam in static call also you can run without sub program load again understand if it is normal way what we do we combine sub program main program load and create single load module but if i am using pam equal to dynam option a static call program will behave like a dynamic call that is the fourth difference repeat guys if you understood little bit not the full part repeat this uh, words what i told write it down in your notepad uh, read it couple of times you'll understand okay since we are talking video right <coughs> on the video you might have understood only little but yes repeat this video for two three times guys you'll understand easily you can write it down and uh, repeat the same thing in the interview also then the question number 20 what is plan and package now this is what i told you in the last videos as well guys this is video number 4 package is what i am interested first plan will come second so when you have written an sql query guys listen carefully okay when you have written an sql query in the cobal db2 program when you perform a pre compilation process what it does it will take your sql query and put it in an output member called dbrm so yes dbrm contains your sql query please remember dbrm contains your sql query now this sql query is not having full details guys okay when you are running run to run a query you need to mention full details in the query point of view now since you have written the code query in the program you will not write the schema name your query will not have the locking concept whether it you should use a cursor stability repeatable read or something what type of lock to use who is the authorization for that what happens if the query is error all these details you will not mention in the program query so what we do here is in the bind package step okay during the bind package step along with your query we'll attach some details using the concept of bind parameters all of you you along with your sql query which is dbrm plus you'll be having the meta details as a package in the package we will tell 
what is the schema that should be used. In the package, we'll say whether it will be executed in production or test any environment, what is the SSID. In the package, we'll tell what is the isolation level, what type of lock to use like that. There are certain bind parameters. Some of them are defaultly added. Some of them are importantly added. So all these bind parameters put together will create a package. Now what you need to remember is package plus DBRM is your full query. Package plus DBRM is actually your full SQL query. Now to run the query, what you need is the connection to DB2 software. I have a query in my notepad. I cannot run on DB2. I have the same query in my Spoofy tool. I can run the query. The difference is not the query. The difference is my notepad is not connected to the DB2 software. Whereas the Spoofy tool is, is already connected to your mainframe DB2 software. Query can be anywhere written. But what I need is a connection to DB2 system. Without the connection, we cannot run any particular query. Plan is your connection. Plan is the one which is connecting your package and the DB2 software. So in the interview, if they ask you, you don't need to tell all these things. I'm just explaining you the point because this is important. In the interview, you say package contains the DBRM details. That's what you will say. Plan contains the package and connection to execute the package. Got it? Little bit, right? So again, repeat the video, guys. You'll understand most of it as such. So we are done with this another five part of question. This is video number four. We have other videos in the English language only, guys. We'll cover the remaining part as soon as possible. Within this week or next week, we'll cover at least another 50, 60 questions. Okay. If you understood this part, if you like, guys, please simple subscribe to our channel. And as I told you guys in first point, what SQL code you want me to discuss in the next video, put that in the comment. Okay. And if you want to join our training, details are given guys, ping me on WhatsApp. I can share more details later. Okay. See you then. Thank you.